Today, I'm going to code a very simple cube, just pure CSS using custom properties. So let's see. First of all, the markup. We have a cube element and inside it six uh, cube face elements. And we don't give these classes like front, back, left, whatever, uh, because this just clutters our markup and it makes it more difficult for us to make the code logical with the help of a CSS preprocessor. So um, here I have the cube edge, I've set it to four ends, and I've set this to the cube faces, gave, the, uh, gave them a box shadow to um, make them easier to see. And let's blow up this a bit, uh, increasing the font. And we set the uh, line height to the cube edge so that we have our text right in the middle. So this should work. Now let's absolutely position all uh, the div elements. So we have Um, and now let's put this whole thing in the middle. Um, and since now it's uh, coming out a bit, now let's set a negative margin here. So now it's dead in the middle. and. We can uh, do something else that's going to help us uh, see things uh, see things in 3D a lot easier, and that's add a rotation. So this is the rotation animation, and it just rotates around the y-axis, the vertical axis, um, by one turn. Okay, and we set this animation here. So this does the rotation, but um, it looks quite flat. So let's take care of that. Um, we set the perspective on the body, but before anything else, overflow hidden. We make the body our scene, so we give it full height. And we set the perspective. And this perspective is exaggerated, but it helps us uh, see things better. So now we are transforming the cube in 3D, but we also want its children to be transformed in 3D. That's why we need to set transform style, preserve 3D. Now, what this property does is makes sure that inside a 3D transformed element, we can have 3D transformed children. So that's when we, uh, when we need to set this property, because I see a lot of times that people set it on everything, just maybe, maybe it's going to make their stuff work. But this is the one situation when you need to set it. When you are transforming an element in 3D and that element has 3D transformed children. That's all we need. Um, so now let's see. Let's say we want to bring uh, the first uh, face. We want to bring it in front of all the others. So initially all of our faces are in the plane of the screen and the cube we want to build is going to be half in front of the plane of the screen and the other half is going to be behind the plane of the screen uh, and the front face of the cube is going to be parallel to the um, plane of the screen the back face of the cube is going to be parallel to the plane of the screen and all the other faces are going to go through the plane of the screen and they're perpendicular onto that plane of the screen and so we take um, the first element and we apply a transform that's a translate along the z-axis by half the cube edge so we can see that now we have this um, in front now let's say we want to position something on the right so on the right um, this works the following way first of all we rotate 
uh, our face so that it points towards the right. Uh, we, rotate it around, we rotate it around the y-axis and a rotation towards the right around the y-axis which points down is a clockwise rotation. So that's a rotate y. Clockwise means positive. And so that's plus 90 degrees. And now we're going to have a face that points towards the right. But we also need to move it. So that's a translate Z by half the cube edge. So now we have the face on the right. And one thing I want you to notice is that we can put a rotation here. And this is a rotate Y of 0 degrees. And this 0 degrees can be written as 0 times 90 degrees. And this can be written as 1 times 90 degrees. And this one here can be written as 0 plus 1. So if we have these faces, one index corresponding to each, so we have 0 corresponding to the first, 1 corresponding to the second, then we can find a pattern and generate these values. So if we go like this and take the next face, and here we have 2 plus 1 and 2 times 90 degrees, then we get the face in the back. And as you can see, all of these um, faces have a front and a back. And the way we position them, like this with a rotation, with a rotation around the y-axis, and then a translation in front, we are positioning them so that their front face is on the outside of the cube. So now let's take another face. And here we're going to move up to 3. Okay, but now we've gone around the circle, around the y-axis. And we still need to um, put one face up and one face down. Um, and we need transform x for this. So um, this is going to be the fourth one. This is going to need a, a rotate x of 90 degrees. So how can we create a pattern this way? Let's see the fifth one. So we need to put this one on the bottom. So we need to uh, a rotation of a minus 90 degrees. So that it's on the bottom. Uh, but this is 5. Sorry. So, okay. So how can we get a pattern here? This 90 is 1 times 90. And this minus 90 is minus 1 times minus 90. But... Um, 1 can be written as minus 1 raised to the power of 4 that we have here. So um, this is power minus 1 to 4. And this minus 1 can be written as minus 1 raised to the power of 5. So, so it's pretty much we have a conditional and if i is smaller than 4 then we have this rotation around the y-axis and if i is greater than 4 then we have this so let's create the loop um, six. and we have nth child and we set the rotation and this is going to be if i is smaller than 4, then we have this thing, except here we have i. Otherwise, we have this rotation, this pattern, and here we have i not 4. So this is our rotation, how it works. And uh, now here we put a transform. Where we have this rotation. And then we have a translate Z by half the cube edge. And this gives us our cube. 
So, um, here we're going to also set um, a color list. And this is going to be, we pick it from the palette at the beginning, I plus one. And we're going to set a background, which is going to be a linear gradient. And here we're going to set on a random angle. And this is going to be a random 360 times 1 degree. And we're going to have the angle here. And then we're going to have the color list. And this should set us some nice backgrounds. But now we can't see all the cube edges anymore. So let's add one more. Rotate here. So, um, yeah, this works a lot better. Now, let's imagine we had set uh, the font size here. Let's make this less exaggerated, because this is crazy. Okay, so now we have a cube that's uh, rotating around. So now we should see all the faces, I hope. Yeah, we can see all the faces like this. So uh, yeah, this is it. This is our cube. <laughs>